Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the uh, second, the third video on the uh, chapter two, and this is going to contain all about viruses. And there are some MCQ questions which I would like to discuss with you also to see how much you have understood this chapter. Now, as you can see here in the syllabus, these are the two points which we are going to discuss in this video. State the main features of viruses, limited to protein coat and genetic material. This genetic material can either be DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, or it can be RNA. So it can't be both. So some viruses will have DNA, some will have RNA, and that will decide their name also. So DNA or RNA, and then understand that viruses can only replicate in living cells. So they need a living host cell, which can be an animal cell, which can be a plant cell, or which can be a bacteria. So they uh, actually invade animal cells. Uh, plant cells and bacteria. So we have to now study how do they invade animal cells, how do they invade plant cells and how do they invade bacteria and then what is that virus called which invades bacteria that's called a bacteriophage and phages you'll study a lot in genetic engineering as well so we will talk a lot about them in that chapter as well. So state the main features of virus and understand that viruses only replicate in living cells. That is why they do not come under any classification because they're not even living. Then the key features of viruses or the main features of viruses are they're very small. They're 100 times smaller than a bacteria. So if a virus says 1 millimeter, then the bacteria will be 100 millimeters. So 100 times smaller than bacteria. And there's no typical cell structure. What do you mean by no typical cell structure? What does it not have? No cytoplasm. It doesn't have a cytoplasm. It has no cell membrane. It has no cell wall. And because it has no cytoplasm, so it has no organelles, no mitochondria. So it doesn't even respire, it doesn't even have nutrition, it doesn't even grow. But the only thing why we are studying it in biology is because it can reproduce inside another living cell. So it has a DNA or an RNA. This is the DNA or the RNA which is shown as a strand, not a loop, not a, this thing, it's a strand. And then there is the protein coat, which they have colored yellow here. This is the protein coat are all around it. And then at times there is another envelope outside, which is called, which is made up of lipids. And this is a, actually a phospholipid and it is an envelope outside, which can have, it's made up of fats. And that is why we wash our hands when we were being asked during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that you have to wash your hands because this the, the COVID virus has a fat a lipid envelope on the outside. So in order to wash it off, it's on your hands or if you've touched something which has the virus, so you'd have to wash it off. You need to have soap and water so that you can wash it off. The, the fat will not only just be removed by water only. Now, how does a virus infect a human cell? Infecting virus, virus attaches to the cell and there is usually a receptor on the cell. That is why they are specific, like the hepatitis virus only affects the liver cells. So there will be a receptor on which that virus fits, just like the lock and key and the enzyme active site in the substrate. And then you see what happens, the virus enters the cell. So the virus has now entered the cell and then new virus parts are made inside the cell. So actually it takes over this cell, it hijacks this cell and then asks this cell to make its parts, all its parts, the protein coat and the DNA copies. And you see many virus particles are made. So new virus is assembled and the release of the new virus from the cell. Sometimes of course the cell dies in this process, sometimes it doesn't and these new virus particles are being released. So we're saying new virus from the cell is being released. So, number one attaches to a cell. That is why we say viruses are specific. Like the polio virus affects the motor neuron of the spinal cord. While the um, hepatitis virus affects our liver cells. And we get hepatitis, which is an infection of the liver. Now, as I said, viruses invade either animal cells or plant cells or bacteria. And the virus which invades bacteria is called a bacteriophage. The virus is called a bacteriophage. And for a short, we say phage. So attachment of the phage to E. coli. E. coli is a bacteria. And injection of the phage chromosome. Number two, breakdown of the bacterial chromosome by phage-specific enzyme. And then you can see the phage chromosome. And the poor bacterial chromosome is far away. Bacterial chromosome is totally broken down. And now the phage chromosome copies are made. Replication of the phage chromosome using bacterial material. Now it's taken over the bacterial 
all the machinery of the bacteria and it's asking the bacteria to make its DNA copies of its phage. So replication of the phage chromosome using bacterial materials and phage enzymes. Then the phage sheath, base plate, tail fibers, expression of the phage genes and produce the phage structural components. The protein coat has to be made by the amino acids which the bacteria has and the ribosomes which the bacteria has because the proteins are made on the ribosomes. Bacteria have ribosomes. Virus do not have any ribosomes but the dictation is done by the viral DNA. The viral DNA then takes over the bacteria and, and starts using its ribosomes to make its protein, starts using its amino acids to make its proteins. So assembly of the progeny phage particles and then release of the progeny phage by lysis of the bacterial wall. So this bacterial wall has broken now and these phages are being released. So initially there was one and now you can see all these one, two, three, four, five, six of these and these will be released and they will attack other cells and then more and more cells will be involved and more and more cells will actually die because the virus has taken over now. Now you can see how an HIV virus, which is a retrovirus, meaning it has an RNA, how it invades the white blood cell. Number one is attachment. Number two is penetration. Now the viral RNA is converted to viral DNA because it contains an enzyme reverse transcriptase. You see transcription is DNA to mRNA. So the RNA to viral DNA is made. Then number four, viral DNA incorporated into the host DNA. You can see how you can see the color. It's beautifully. You can see how the color now has become part of the host DNA. And then five, viral proteins and RNA synthesized by the host cell. Why? Because it's using the ribosomes of the white blood cell to make its own proteins. And it's using the amino acids which are present in the white blood cell. So viral proteins and RNA synthesized by the host cell. Then the viral proteins and RNA assembled into new viruses. And then the virus bud off from the host cell. So this is how the HIV virus takes over the white blood cells. And that is why the person loses his or her immunity. And then you have opportunistic infections. Because now he has no immunity. He will just suffer from any normal viral infection will probably die of it or it comes so bad because he doesn't have his white blood cells to defend uh, his body cells. So this is how an HIV virus takes over a white blood cells and then destroys these white blood cells. Now here are some few MCQ questions which I'm going to do with you there. Uh, the first question is the diagram shows an animal. What is the animal? Animal with a vertebral column would be a vertebrate. Well, this is not a vertebrate, so that was right, we know that. Then animal with an exoskeleton. Yes, this is an insect, so it's got an exoskeleton. So then you go to two. Let's go to two now. Now there are two possibilities. No distinct head, thorax and abdomen. Distinct head, thorax and abdomen. Yes, you can see there is this head, there is this thorax, and there is this abdomen. Segmented body, arthropods. So no distinct head, thorax and abdomen. Yes, but it has a distinct. So then you go to three. Now when you go to three, let's read three now. I occupies less than one third of the head. Now let's look at the head. I occupies, now you can see the head here. So the eye is this part. So the eye occupies less than one third of the head. I occupies more than one third of the head. Yes, it occupies less than one third of the head. So the answer is B. So the answer was B. Now coming to the second question. What is a characteristics of both insects and arachnids? So you know insects and arachnids come in the arthropods. So what are the choices? Eight legs, exoskeleton, three pairs of legs, wings. Now we know all characteristics of both. So insects do not have eight legs. And arachnids do not have three pairs of legs. And then the arachnids do not have any wings. So the only possible answer was exoskeleton. So the answer is B. Then let's look at this last question. Not last question, the last question on this page. Each of the diagrams shows an area of cytoplasm. Each of the diagram shows an area which is from a prokaryote. Now you know prokaryotes, VP. Bacteria are prokaryotes. Bacteria are prokaryotes. So you remember bacteria, they do not, number one, have mitochondria. 
they do not have rough endoplasmic reticulum they do not have chloroplast they just have nuclear material which is a dna strand and this is this part of it so it doesn't is not enclosed in a nuclear membrane but it's just this thread like structure so the answer was c why because this has a chloroplast that's an organelle bacteria do not have proper membrane bound organelle so this is wrong they do not have these are all mitochondria so they are there no mitochondria and this is all the ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum so that is why the answer was c this is a prokaryote question 4 the diagram shows an animal whose scientific name is falco peregrinus you know this is the genus it's always started with a capital letter that is why f is capital and then it's small and should be italics it's in italics and then peregrinus is the species so the first letter is always the genus and the second letter is always species g also comes first in the alphabet s comes later in the alphabet so that is why the answer to question 4 was b because that's the only one in which we have peregrinus so this is the answer then again some fact which you have to know what kind of skin do amphibians have now this of course you've got to memorize it all so it's moist with scales dry without scales dry with scales moist with scales it's just something factual they just have it you have to just memorize this you have to ratta is all rote learning then question number 6 the diagram shows a flowering plant use the key to identify the plant now flower has four petals let's count these petals no they are 1 2 3 4 5 so they are five petals so flower has five petals now leaves with smooth edge no the leaves have these sort of edges leaves with jagged edge so the answer is d the leaf is this would have been a smooth leaf but no look at this leaf it's got this so it's got these jagged edges if you didn't know this english well then you better get improve your english skills then coming on to the seventh question which is a little weird question Donkeys and zebras are different species fine they can breed to produce an animal called a z donk and z donks are not fertile okay so they've told you in the question donkeys and zebras are different species now which statement is correct z donk and donkeys are the same species z donk and zebras are the same species z donks are a species z donks are not a species Now if you look if you remember the definition of species species is a group of organisms having the same features which can interbreed to produce fertile offsprings but it is is what is it telling you in the question it's not fertile so that is why the answer is d z donks are not a species species ki definition is very clear is a group of organisms having the same features anat- anatomical physiological behavioral and they can breed to produce fertile offsprings but isme to this is infertile so the answer is d z donks are not a species now question number 8 which features is characteristics only of birds now again we have to learn birds what do they have hair and wings hard shelled eggs and feathers scales and soft shelled eggs wings and soft shelled eggs We all have seen birds' nests, and we've seen the uh, eggs in there, and they are hard shell; they're not soft shell. So that is why the answer to it is B: hard shell eggs and feathers. Birds can all fly because of the feathers, and they have very lightweight bones as well. Then question number nine: Which shows an organism that has been named using the binomial system? Brown seaweed, polar bear, red frog. uh and vulpus vulpus now whenever you reading this please pause this video here if you want to do it on your own because i'm going to tell you the answer but i leave it for a short while so that you can pause it and then think what the answer could be and write down your answer in your uh, book into your copy or something in front of you so a says brown seaweed b says polar bear red fox and vulpus vulpus now naturally you have to remember is binomial system means it has to have two words the first one has to be the genus it has to start with a capital letter and then the next has to be the species and these are all of course in a certain 
different uh, terminology. So that is why these were normal brown seaweed, polar bear. These are general names. These are none of these. This is the answer is D because this V is capital. Though they've given capital to all the other letters to confuse you all. But none of those was correct. And the answer is the question 9. The answer is D. Okay, then coming to question 10, the diagram shows an arthropod. So they've shown you that it's an arthropod. And it has all these legs. And it has these pedipalp. To which group does it belong? Now, if you look at it, you remember myriapods where every segment had a pair of legs. And there's lots of segmented body. And every had a pair of legs. But you look at this last part. This is no legs here. So it cannot be a myriapod. Now, insects had wings. This doesn't have wings. <clears throat> Constrations or arachnids. What can it be? So you have to understand is that it had to be arachnid. It isn't a crustacean. To which group does it belong? Right? So the answer is A. Question 12. The table shows a number of animals collected in a sample from woodland and the groups to which they belong. Uh, animal group number in the sample, arachnids 10, crustacean 8, insects 80, and myriapod 7. How many arthropods in total in the sample have 6 or 8 legs? Now you see crustaceans have 5 or more pairs. 5 or more pairs. Crustaceans have 5 or more pairs, so 10 or 12. Arachnids have 4 pairs, so that's 8. And insects have 3 pairs, so that's 6. So if we have to add the arachnids and the insects, that is 10 plus 80. So this is 90. So the answer is C. Please remember these. You have to remember these. Otherwise, you won't have problems. Like crustaceans have two pairs of antennae. Arachnids, no antennae. Insects have one pair of antennae. So there's a lot of rote learning that we need to do. Uh, question 13, the diagram shows how homo sapiens modern people could have evolved from earlier ancestors. Homo sapiens modern people, uh, before that, okay, the beginning was Homo habilis, then Homo erectus, then Homo heidelbergensis, cis, and then Homo sapiens. So the genus is the same, H, the capital, the first letter, Homo, Homo, Homo is the same, but then the species is differing. So which statement about modern people and their ancestors is correct? They are in the same species and the same genus. No, well, the species is all changing. Genus is the same, yes. They are not in the same species, but not the same genus. No genus. They are in the same genus, but not the same species. Yes, 13, the answer is C. And D, they are neither the same species nor the same genus. No, they are the same genus. I mean, because homo, 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 this is the genus. Number 14, lichens are formed from two different organisms living together. The table shows some of the characteristics two of two organisms, X and Y, found in most lichens. X made of strands called hyphae. Hyphae have cell walls and many nuclei, so it has to be fungus. So it has to be either this or this. Then Y is single cell, but cell contains a nucleus and chloroplast, so it has to be uh, eukaryote. And But it's single cell, so it has to be a protoctist. So that is why the answer to 14 is B. Now in this there is no argument which is right because you either know this or you don't know it. You have to be very clear about it. Why can't be anything? A single cell nucleus chloroplast. Now the, of the chloroplast is not present in fungus. Yes, chloroplast is present in plant and plant but it's single cell. Plants are multicellular. So if you remember that then this question would be easy. Then it says systems of classification for show which organisms show more recent ancestors. What is the most accurate system of classification? Using anatomy, using DNA based sequences, using morphology, using a pedigree diagram. Yeah, because you have you see we haven't studied this as yet, but using DNA based sequences help us to find out how closely related they are. And this will of course be done later in the chapter, so maybe at the moment you can't understand it. Question 16, the diagram shows a key for five vertebrates, start here, has legs, no legs, has feathers, no feathers, then no feathers, people have scales, has scales, animals, sorry, has scales, has no scales, so has feathers, this must be birds,
Now pause the video here and have a look and figure out first yourself and then you can continue and I'm explaining it to you. So you know reptiles have no legs, amphibians have no scales, fish has scales. So which class of vertebrates does organism W belong to? So it was easy. It was A, amphibians. Question 17, the diagram shows an animal whose scientific name is Rattus Rattus. Uh, which genus does it belong to? Now, you know, genus is always the first one and then it is the species. And it has to be with a capital letter. So that is why the answer to this was C. Question 18, the diagram shows a flower seen from above. Use the key to find the name of the family to which it belongs. Four petals go to two. Okay, so let's go to two now because it does have four petals. It doesn't have five. Go to two, two stamens. Then it's this. If it's six stamens, it's got six stamens, then it's B, so it's Brassica. Brassicacea. I never know how to pronounce these. Question 19. To which group do both the organisms shown in the diagram belong? And they've shown you some pictures. They're leaf like prawns, which have structures containing spores on their lower surface. Now, that's something basic we all know. It has to be ferns, it couldn't be anything else. Because they are not flowering plants and they uh, reproduce by these spores and they form a zygote and so they're not like the dicot and the monocot they are in the flowering the the two classification that we study ferns and flowering plants question 20 the diagram shows an insect using the key to identify uh, the insect wings present go to two uh, okay so that's it wings are present so we go to two two pairs of wings Two pairs of wings or one pair of wings yeah we've got two pairs of wings so we go to three then because you see this is one wing and this is another wing so two pairs of wings and wings with circular marking C wings without circular marking now I know this was a little confusing because this actually is not circular marking these are venation these are veins just like leaves have veins so this is a different type of marking. Circular markings is something like this. These are called eye spots. And there are many, many of these in peacocks. And this is a very interesting phenomena which scientists and biologists have studied how they reflect a certain amount of light and how they look like the iris and the pupil and have this very concentric circles. And that's why they are called ocelli. They're not actual eyes, but they are eye spots. So wings with circular markings and wings without circular markings and because it didn't have any circular marking, that's why the answer is D. The circular marking would be something like this. Please remember these wings do not have circular marking. They have sort of veins. So it's a little bit of checking how good your biological English is. Okay, now that completes this uh, video. And I hope now this chapter is complete and you revise this and please do more questions on this and do the topical other questions as well, which is the paper two questions. And uh, because this is new and this will be, we don't have any question bank on this. So I've taken these out from some other uh, examining board. And uh, I'm thankful to teacher Lubna who has helped me to collect all these questions. And uh, thank you, teacher Lubna. And uh, please go through these questions and see how uh, you can manage these. Thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing.